First thing first, I look like a fucking Chia pet. I am super blind. I cannot see shit. So whether I like it or not, I've always been into frames, glasses, and sunglasses. This pair itself is getting a little beat up, so I've been looking for a replacement for a little bit. So this video is the culmination. Culmination? This video is essentially the result of all the research I've done in picking out exactly what glasses, styles, and materials will be popping for 2021. I've also provided quite a bit of inspo and examples for each thing. Starting the list off at number four, we have clear frames. Clear frames are a stranger to nobody at this point. They've been trending upwards for the last five years or so to the point where they're no longer trendy, but I would say they're just a classic option. We've seen them on people such as Jaime King, Nakamoto Yuta, Zoe Deutsch. We've seen them literally on everyone and their mothers. But if you look at these people, we can see that what these frames do is that they brighten out their eye area, they bring out your facial features, and they're just a subtle, good option. So would I say that they're played out? No. It's like a white t-shirt. Would anyone say that white tees are played out? They're just safe, everyday options. Most clear frames are typically super lightweight and really durable. It also doesn't hurt that transparency has always been a point of interest in fashion. We've seen it in the Off-White Converse with their transparent upper. We've seen it in other collections such as Moon Spring Summer 2020, Louis Vuitton Spring 2021, Fendi Spring 2019, it's just a fun concept to play with and people have caught on. So even going into 2021, you cannot go wrong with a pair of clear frames. However, if you did want to spice it up a little bit, you could opt for the tinted variants. I personally am a fan of the nude and the rose tinted ones. They're pretty sick and they add just a little bit more bling to your playing. At number three, let's talk about materials, specifically acetate. Acetate boasts many advantages over other frame materials, so we see it spiking in popularity. Acetate is a non-petroleum-based plastic, and it's usually made from a wood or cotton pulp. So it's a much more environmentally friendly and renewable option as compared to cheaper plastics or injected nylon. If we look into some of the recent fashion shows, we'll see that a lot of designers love acetate as well. Here we have Fendi. Givenchy and Celine. And we can see with these three designers, they've all used acetate to make these unique fun designs. Acetate as a material is extremely easy to color and extremely easy to make transparent. So it gives them a lot of flexibility. Additionally, we see that Balenciaga specifically mentions environmentalism as one of their key focuses for design in their spring 2021 collection. And this intent is reflected in their use of materials, specifically acetate for their glasses. Just to throw in some more examples, both Berluti and Valentino are using acetate for their designs. Plus, acetate is lightweight, hypoallergenic, and super durable. Personally, I picked up this pair of sunglasses from a brand called Lexola. They're tortoise shell with this yellow tint, and I've seen a ton of other people buy from this brand, specifically Magnus Ronning, Emma Chamberlain, a couple others. And I have to say, I'm a big fan. All the advantages of acetate shine through with these shades. They're lightweight, I barely feel any pressure on my nose, and I'm just not afraid of these snapping at the easiest breeze. At number two, let's talk about shape. Ditch your Harry Potter looking ass glasses. Ditch your tiny ass frames and those feline cat eyes. I mean, you don't have to, wear what you want. But in my opinion, rectangular frames are taking the front seat again next year. Let's start with black rectangular frames. These are a classic silhouette, and one brand, Ground Cover, has recently done their version of them, and I am in love. Ground Cover is run by this dude named Avery Ginsberg, and they have a really good focus on environmentalism. And wow. These sunglasses, in my opinion, are beautiful. The shape is awesome, the color, the tint is solid, and everyone I see rocking them just looks like a complete fucking badass. If we move on to luxury designers, we see that in the 2021 shows, there are many people that have used this look, from Louis Vuitton, to Prada, to Ami, to Casablanca. If we look at the models wearing this specific type of accessory, they look so sharp and powerful 
like fucking Steve from Minecraft, you know? These frames in general take a lot of inspiration from the era of power dressing in the 80s, where women would wear dark conservative menswear with more feminine accessories such as bags and jewelry to try to break into a male-dominated political and professional environment. This movement started way earlier with the Chanel power suit, but it's been picked up by many others, Margaret Thatcher being an absolute icon of this style. A great recent example is Jill Sanders. Although they didn't feature any sunglasses, the clothing is just so strong and powerful and just gorgeous. So even now, these motifs and ideas behind power dressing are still incredibly relevant. Outside of black, we also see funkier rectangular frames from designers like Dries Van Noten and also Valentino. But regardless, rectangular frames give your face and your overall outfit this sharpness, this angularness, and this sense of power. If you pair it with sharper and darker clothes, it multiplies that effect. But also, if you wear it with some more flowery, some funky stuff, the juxtaposition is really great. Gives your outfit some more interest and some little more contrast. Lastly, at number one, big, oversized, face-blocking glasses and sunglasses are back in. If we look at the runway, there have been numerous examples of this from Tom Ford, Fendi, Stella McCartney, Undercover, Acne Studios, and even more. To me, it seems like a lot of these designers are taking cues from the 70s where these style of glasses were hugely popular. Tom Ford is a great example of this. He says that he turns to the models from the 70s like Pat Cleveland or Donna Jordan. He admired and took inspiration from their smiles, their style of makeup, and in essence, their style as a whole. If you look at his collection specifically, you can see how 70s inspired these looks are, especially with that makeup. Undercover, in a similar fashion, had an entire set dedicated to Patti Smith, who was a punk rock feminist icon. These designers all took inspiration from the 70s, a time where people were able to find happiness and carefreeness in a time of political and social unrest and general strife. Outside of that, big glasses just look sick. If you have big glasses wearing them like this, you got a mask on and you got like a hat or something, you're just incognito, bro. You feel so sick going to Target all decked up. If you go for a more subtle pair, you look like a grandma. If you go for a louder, funkier pair, you look like a rock sensation. There's just no losing with these big, funky, fresh, face-blocking glasses. Overall, I found this to be a pretty big success. I picked up two really sick pairs of sunglasses that I'm pretty happy with. I'm still looking for the perfect pair of glasses since that's like a more everyday permanent thing, so I'm putting more thought behind it, but it's been good. Also, if you're curious about this jacket, I have a pick-up video coming up soon because I've picked up a lot of really, really sick stuff. So, thanks for watching. Subscribe!